Right. Good morning, everyone, uh, or almost uh, afternoon. And uh, thank you so much, Joe, for, for that kind introduction. And uh, you know, it's a pleasure to be here um, this Saturday and, and uh, be part of this event to really kick off a major effort um, on part of the International Myeloma Foundation um, to spread the word, spread the knowledge, um, and, and also get very strong engagement uh, from the community at large. Um, cancer care is, is a team effort. And, and the team, as uh, you know, uh, Amy had mentioned in her talk, it's, it's very broad. It's not just the, uh, you know, the healthcare team. Um, it's the patient, it's the caregivers, you know, it's the extended family that, that walk along with the patient in their journey. So, um, so you know, thank you all uh, for being here. And Joe is, you know, is right. You know, it's, it's a difficult task to kind of coalesce everything that we're doing in myeloma. Um, and, and the approach we take uh, in a short 10 or 15 minute, um, um, you know, summary, but I'll, I'll try to, you know, stay on task and, and be as engaging as possible, um, you know, and, and I don't have the same cadre of jokes that like Dr. Joe does, but I'll, I'll try to do my best. Uh, you know, I guess that's part of, um, you know, uh, the aging and maturation process, I guess, Joe. <laughs> I did not bring this up, you did, so. <laughs> All right, so, you know, I think, you know, Dr. Joe gave an excellent summary of the, you know, natural history of plasma cell disorders, you know, where we start from in MGUS, you know, how um, there are changes that take place in the plasma cells that eventually lead to these cells overpopulating, growing, and causing, you know, symptoms in our patients. And then when, when that transition takes place, you know, we, we say the myeloma has become active and we need to control it. And the main principles when we are faced with that situation is not just simply taking into account what's happening, you know, with the myeloma, but looking at the bigger picture having a conversation with the patient about their goals, you know, what do they want, you know, out of this journey. And from the disease perspective, you know, our, our goal is during that first year of diagnosis to get patients into as close to a deep response as possible. And I'm not going to go through the criteria, but the idea is you kick the myeloma down as low as it can go so that it doesn't cause patients grief, and then maintain it there. That's the basic principle. So how do we get there? We typically start off with three or four drug combinations for our patients, uh, which we call induction treatment. And that induction treatment phase typically lasts, could last from four to six months. Um, if patients are participating in certain clinical trials, that phase can last up to seven or eight months or seven or eight cycles, depending on, you know, if, if they're, you know, uh, the, the specific clinical trial that they may be on. And then once the patient's response have plateaued, you know, during this time where we start the conversations about the possibility of having a stem cell transplant, uh, you know, either right after induction treatment or, you know, collecting those stem cells to be used when the myeloma, you know, if the myeloma comes back um, again in the near future. So that's the next step. But the bottom line is, you know, with induction or initial therapy, with or without stem cell transplant, the goal is to get the myeloma down to as low a level as possible. And you'll hear a lot about what we are calling uh, presence or absence of minimal residual disease. Uh, that's a fancy way of saying, you know, we can use, you know, special kind of uh, assays on the bone marrow aspirate sample that we take from the patients and measure out at very, very low levels if we can detect the myeloma cells or not. Um, and that's the aspirational goal we have for, for our patients. Not every patient gets there currently. But, you know, I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the newer therapies that are coming down the pike that may be able to get a vast majority of, of our patients there. So once patients are through the initial induction treatment, you know, with or without stem cell transplant, we typically use one or two drugs to maintain patients into that, you know, in that response. 
Dr. Joe also mentioned myeloma is not one disease. And if we look at, you know, the, the genetics of the disease, myeloma is at least eight different types of myeloma. And the chances of the myeloma coming back are different for each of those categories. So it's important to have, you know, some of these discussions with your myeloma uh, specialist or myeloma doctor um, on, on the kind of myeloma you have and, you know, what are the strategies that can help, uh, you know, keep you in a good response or remission for, for long duration of time. And, and so, you know, that's kind of the gist of the initial, you know, treatment that, that patients get. The more exciting part, however, is, uh, you know, something, again, that Dr. Joe alluded to early on. Over the past 40 years, we have moved from using old-fashioned chemotherapy drugs and using them in very small doses along with steroids to utilizing combinations of chemotherapy drugs with steroids and some novel treatments like proteasome inhibitors and immunomodulatory drugs, with the idea being that let's use drugs that are easier to give but give us a better bang for our buck for our patients. However, the holy grail of any cancer treatment has been harnessing the immune system and helping the patient's immune system fight the cancer and put it into a good response or remission. And I think that's how we will eventually get to cure of many of the cancers, including myeloma. And we are more open to the concept of curing this disease today than we have been ever before. And it is because of the advances we've made in immunotherapies. And when we say immunotherapies, it's a big umbrella. There are many different treatments. You know, I think you know, Dr. Joe talked about monoclonal antibodies. He mentioned bispecific therapies, uh, uh, bispecific antibodies as well as CAR T cell therapy. But it's, it's the latter two that are really, you know, uh, giving us a lot of excitement in the field because we are seeing, even in people you know, who have had myeloma for a while, have had three or four different treatments. So, so you know, uh, Dr. Joe mentioned the myeloma kind of you know, uh, going into a response, coming out of a response, then you treat it, and then it goes into a response. So imagine you know, having patients who've had uh, that occur four or five times, and the myeloma becomes you know, a little bit more difficult to treat each time that happens. However, the immunotherapies are showing very good responses in those patients, very deep responses even at that stage. So you'd be very hopeful if six or seven out of 10 patients in that scenario can get into a very good deep response, that if we move those treatments and do clinical trials in earlier lines of treatment, the responses will be even higher, the depth of response will be even better. So, you know, bispecific antibodies are uh, antibody treatments with one part of the antibody can recognize a protein on the cancer cell. The other part can recognize the patient's own immune cell called T cell. And it brings the T cell to kill the bad guy. And, and that strategy looks very promising. The other way in which immunotherapy is being utilized is by taking patient's T cells and teaching them how to recognize the cancer cell and going after it. So that's, that is the very simple way of saying that, you know, what CAR T cell therapy is. So, you know, in any given patient, we take the T cells. You know, again, it, the collection is from, it can be from, from the peripheral blood. Uh, it's not as labor intensive as collecting stem cells. And then we send those cells to be manufactured. So, so there are they're genetically modified to help recognize a surface protein on the myeloma cells called BCMA. Uh, there are other proteins that we have, we have you know, we are considering for, for that strategy as well, but BCMA is the most uh, promising target right now. And we then help populate those cells, you know, um, you know in, in a Petri dish, and when we have adequate expansion, the product is sent back to the cancer center. Patients get um, some chemotherapy for three days um, to reduce the patient's own immune system, uh, immune system's ability to you know, uh, take in those CAR T cells. 
um, and then the CAR T cells are infused, they go in and start recognizing the cancer cells like Pac-Man, you know. So, so there are these tiny Pac-Man, you know, who go and, and start chewing out the cancer cells. And, and so that whole process, you know, um, is, is showing us that even in advanced myeloma, uh, you know, patients where, uh, you know, the cancer has started to become resistant to other therapies, anywhere from eight to 10, you know, out of 10 patients, depending on the kind of product, can respond. And, you know, eight out of 10 patients, you know, specifically with one of the products, uh, you know, called Siltacel, eight out of 10 patients can get into a complete response, even in the advanced um, stage. So, you know, with that knowledge, we're, we're trying to move those therapies into the frontline setting. So when I say frontline and newly diagnosed patients, and currently clinical trials are, are being done to see if that strategy can help us get to those, the, that great depth of response in patients and actually, you know, um, uh, be a better strategy for the future. So, you know, uh, with that being said, you know, I think, you know, uh, there is so much hope we have today. I always like to, you know, tell my patients that you have to have measured hope. We have come such a long way with myeloma therapies um, over the past 20 years. And, you know, we have so many options. You know, when I was starting as a trainee, our discussion used to be, okay, you know, we only have these two classes of treatment, which one should we use first, you know, because we, we don't have much of a choice. And now we have, you know, a, you know, what Dr. Joe likes to call the cheesecake factory menu of, uh, you know, regimens for our patients at the time of diagnosis and when the myeloma is coming back. And, and that's great for a chronic management of that disease. But, you know, now that we're asking the C question, you know, can we cure this disease for our patients? You know, I think this is where the immunotherapies will make the you know, biggest impact. And, and that's where, where you know, the, the great hope of uh, the next 10 years lies. I think we will get there uh, for a significant proportion of patients. Um, the last thing I want to mention, I, I shared that, you know, uh, myeloma is many different kinds of myeloma. There are still, um, you know, some myeloma patients who, who, despite all these advances we've made, have a very high chance of the myeloma coming back within the first two years of their diagnosis. And, and we call, you know, that category of, of myeloma high-risk uh, myeloma. So the, the risk is high for the myeloma coming back, even though you've, you've done all, all you can with giving the right treatments. And that is an active area of my personal interest and, and research as well. Um, and, and that's where I think we will need to make a lot more headway. Uh, but the great news is we have much better tools at our disposal to treat those patients and we're devising clinical trials and strategies for the high-risk patients that are a little different than you know, the other patients. So with that being said, um, you know, Dr. Joe, I'm, I'm going to wrap things up and would love for you to come and rescue me.